we have seen in over a decade. Based on what we heard on the trip, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we'll see a few more steps uh, in the coming weeks. I'm not sure other people are as confident uh, about that. And there are a lot of assessments of President Biden's trip to the Middle East, one from uh, Politico. Biden's Middle East expedition, reputation dinged, interest secured, question mark. President Joe Biden's four-day Middle East trip was a stark demonstration of how, on the global stage, the importance of values at times gets downplayed in the cold pursuit of the national interest. It will take weeks, months, and years to know if it was worth if it was all worth the media nightmare the president and his team endured, the diplomatic gamble had an eye toward the long term. Let's bring in our panel. Trey Gowdy, former congressman from South Carolina. Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com, host of The Guy Benson Show on Fox News Radio. And Harold Ford, Jr., former Tennessee congressman, co-host of The Five. Trey, let me start with you. Uh, your thoughts about you know, what comes out of this trip and, and was it worth it? Well, whatever came out of the trip has been a, a very closely held secret. Um, and, and, and that's part of the problem is no one knows what he accomplished. It may well be that he got Saudi Arabia to help with Iran or be friendlier towards Israel. But what you're seeing, Brett, is a weakened politician uh, with with no defenders. It, it, it's like a man on trial with no, no defense attorney. I mean, his allies have laryngitis. No one can point to anything that was accomplished. Maybe something was. But, but if it was, we ain't heard about it. Well, I mean, to that point, Harold, you had the Saudis saying that something different happened behind the scenes than the White House was saying uh, on both gas uh, in production and on uh, Jamal Khashoggi and, and what the president did or didn't say. Um, a couple of Fox News polls Sunday, uh, President Biden on energy policy approved 38 percent, disapproved 57 percent, asking people if they changed their summer travel plans because of gas prices. Uh, yes, about 52 percent. That's a change from uh, recent years. We asked that question. But do you want the president to run again in 2024? Now, this is Democrats and Republicans uh, together. These are registered voters, 27 percent, yes, 71 percent, no. Harold, your thoughts? Well, first, thanks for having me. Uh, the, look, Henry Kissinger, who has a great book out right now, always reminded policymakers to never let little things get in the way of big things. And big things are always national security issues. I think the president, despite his low poll ratings and other things, he was right to travel there. We've got to reset our relations in that region. Uh, largely because we have bigger plans in Iran or bigger things, bigger aims in Iran. But we have big plans here at home, which are to lower our gas prices and to hopefully get out of the conflict in Ukraine with Ukraine saving face and winning. And part of that is trying to find ways in which the world can be powered. I think some of my party have to understand that real politics takes over when you're confronting real politics. And real politics today suggests that our aims around climate and around other things shouldn't be abandoned, but certain things have to be added to that platform. And one of those things is ensuring that we can power the world. The world has always looked to us in times of peril, particularly since we've been born, especially after we've been born as a nation. And we cannot abandon that space. I applaud the president for doing this. Whether it ups his approval ratings or downs it, he was right to do this. He is not saying that we shouldn't pursue a green energy platform, but what he is saying is we have to pursue freedom and expand it around the globe. And the only way we can do that is by having allies. He was right to reset our relationship. I applaud him. Yeah, I guess uh, as far as oil production goes, there's just a lot of people, Guy, who say, why not open the spigots inside the U.S. and the production domestically instead of going to Saudi Arabia, talking about it, maybe talking about it with Iran, maybe Venezuela, all of those things. Precisely. And if you're an average voter out there not paying close attention to every news cycle like we all do here, and you just get little snippets of the news and a headline here or a soundbite there, you might think to yourself, okay, this president, when he was a candidate, called Saudi Arabia a pariah state. And he said that their leader, the crown prince, was personally responsible for ordering the murder of a journalist. And then he's going to go to that country and give that exact guy the fist bump on his way in to basically beg for more oil production, while the backdrop, to your point, Brett, is day one coming into office. You can say he declared war. You can 
frame it different ways, but this administration and this president, their policies have been, and their rhetoric, extremely hostile to U.S. energy production, especially on the fossil fuel side. So they're hat in hand with the Saudis, erstwhile pariah state apparently, now back in the good graces because of necessity, while we have tied the U.S. You know, energy production machine into knots with one hand behind its back as a deliberate choice. And I think a lot of Americans look at that constellation of issues and decisions and realities and wonder, what the hell is he thinking? It seems incoherent because it is. You know, you look at those poll numbers, uh, Trey, and this White House is now kind of throwing out all kinds of things, and different people are reacting, uh, including the First Lady, Jill Biden, saying why this is happening. She said, the president had so many hopes and plans for things he wanted to do, but every time you turned around, he had to address the problems of the moment. He's just had so many things thrown his way. Who would have ever thought about what happened with the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade? Well, maybe we saw it coming, coming but we, didn't, we still didn't believe it. The gun violence in this country is absolutely appalling. We didn't see the war in Ukraine coming. Trey, I mean, every president has stuff that they don't see coming. Uh, George Bush had 9-11, didn't see coming. But you deal with it. What about this reaction? Yeah, I mean, 9-11, pandemic. I, it, what I keep coming back to, Brett, is we were told, and it had to be true because President Obama and the Washington Post, Post both told us that Joe Biden is the most experienced person to ever run for president on matters of foreign policy. It had to be true because those two people told us that. And yet we had a feckless withdrawal in Afghanistan. You have Russia occupying a neighboring democracy, and you have Iran, perhaps with nuclear capability, Look, what's really sad about what Dr. Biden said is the president of the United States has to go to his spouse to find a defender. Other than Jill Biden and Harold Ford, I hadn't heard too many people defending Joe Biden lately. They don't want him to run for president, and they know he's going to drag them down in November. All right, Harold, you were mentioned quickly. Look, we should pump more here. I hate to disagree with Trey. I'm not defending the president. I'm defending the country. He was right to go there. We should pump more here, and we should find everybody around the world who can help us reset our place in the world, and Saudi Arabia is one of them.